Okay, we're going to go over the safety for the grinder. This is a pedestal grinder, and you should be familiar with at least the parts to some extent. Extent. There's a motor here, and as a spindle, an hour going through, on each end there is mounted a abrasive grinding wheel. And in addition to that, we have tool rest here where you're going to rest your hands while you're grinding, you rest your hands and fingers while you're grinding your tools. Um, this is one of the tools that's probably most commonly found in your house, uh, maybe drill presses and grinders, but it is also one of the more dangerous tools because it has so much mass in the wheels and it has quite a high RPM. So if something does go wrong with the wheel, it can explode, go through a steel guard. I've seen one go and take a big chunk out of a cinder block all the way across the shop. Um, the grinders, uh, the safety on the grinders, the instructor must authorize your initial use of the machine, so I'll show you how to use it and then uh, you'll be able to use it after that. You want to visually inspect the wheels for cracks and chips before starting. So especially over a break or over a long period of time, if it's been used five minutes ago, you probably don't have to do that, but you should inspect to see if there are any breaks or cracks. Before you mount the wheel, I could just show you a grinding wheel. Uh, Here's a typical sort of a grinding wheel. Uh, you want to make sure that that grinding wheel doesn't have any chips or cracks in it. And one way to find out if it has a crack in it is to do a ring test. And the ring test can be done by tapping it with a soft handle. If you can hear that little resonating ring, that little ting that goes all the way around, you know there aren't any cracks in there. If it sounds, if it sounds rather like a, a dud, a dead uh, sound, uh, then a crack will stop that uh, vibration from uh, propagating around and around that wheel. So you want to do that. You also want to make sure that you have paper blotters on both sides. The paper blotters cushion the wheel from the flanges that are on either side. The flanges are like uh, steel washers that clamp the wheel. Um, and you never want to mount one without the, uh, the blotters. A, a foam book cover works pretty good as a, as a stand-in if you don't have one. On the blotter also you have some, some information like you have the most important thing here is the maximum RPM that it can be run. You don't want to ever exceed that. So if you look on the nameplate on the grinding machine, on the grinder you can see that it's 3450 here RPM which is less than the maximum RPM on the wheel. Just some additional information on the wheel. For instance, uh, we have an A80-M5V. The A is aluminum oxide, 80 is the grit size. M is the uh, softness of the wheel, how soft or hard it is, and 5 is the openness of the bond, and V means it's a vitrified bond. Those all we'll talk about when we get into the theory of it in class. <coughs> now, the grinding wheels, when they're mounted on the grinder, your book goes into more in detail in taking it apart, putting it together, but when they're mounted on the grinder, you want to remember that there's a left hand thread on this side and a right hand thread on the right side as you're facing the grinder. Uh, the reason it's that way is so that as you're grinding, the motor is, is always torquing the nut tighter rather than looser as you're using it. Um, when you're grinding, as we, as we continue through this uh, safety sheet here, you don't want to stand in line with the grinding wheel as it starts up. Um, you know, one of the reasons the wheel exploded one time was it was near the stock rack and somebody bumped the wheel with the stock and it put a crack in it. When you start it up, uh, you want to stand to one side. Because if those wheels do explode, they're going to explode and come in a plane that the wheel is currently in. If it doesn't blow up in the first 10 seconds, it's not going to blow up. Uh, we can turn that off again. And then you can step in front of it. So just step aside before you start the machine. You want to stay in line with the wheel. Make sure all the guards are in place, and they are. You the guards on the side. You have the shields here that you can use. Um, another thing you want to look at is you want to make sure that the gap between the I don't want to get too close while it's running here. The gap between the tool rest and the wheel and the gap between the spark arrested here, you can see that or not if I move this guard a little bit, between the spark arrested and the wheel should not exceed a sixteenth of an inch. Um, the reason for that is if this gap is too large, uh, your, your part that you're holding may get caught in there and bind the wheel up. The spark arrester, the spark guard here, prevents sparks from coming around down on top of your part while you're grinding. It's not that big of a safety issue, it's more of a nuisance than anything. But you really want to make sure that this is close to the wheel. You never want to adjust these while the machine is running. If you go to adjust it, you push it a little bit, all of a sudden it lets and moves all at once and you, you drive it right into that wheel. So you don't, you don't ever want to do that. Anytime you're using the grinder, you want to make sure you roll up your sleeves, tuck in loose clothing, remove any rings or watches, and uh, 
just stay clear of that, that wheel. Select the correct wheel for the job, as we mentioned. Uh, that's all mounted on the blotter. For instance, you want to make sure if you're grinding a ferrous material, you have an aluminum oxide wheel. If you're grinding a non-ferrous material, in general, you're going to be using probably a silicone carbide or a diamond wheel. Um, and as I mentioned, you want to make sure that the blotter is on both sides. As we go through the safety sheet, you see the blotter is on both sides of the wheel. And you don't want to have any combustible materials in the area of flying sparks. You don't want to store your gasoline down here or anything that could catch on fire. Um, you don't want to grind on the side of the wheel. This is the side of the wheel as opposed to the periphery of the face of the wheel here. Uh, unless it's made for it. These wheels are not made for it. So if you grind on the side, you can undercut the wheel and weaken it. And a centrifugal force can cause the wheel to fail catastrophically. And you always want to give this machine your undivided attention. As you're grinding on this, it's okay to have your fingers within an eighth of an inch of the wheel as long as you're totally focused and paying attention to what you're doing. Unlike some of these other machines where if you get cut, uh, they can always stitch you back together or you put your limb in a box with ice and you bring it to the emergency room they sew it back on. Unlike, that, unlike those machines, when you get hurt on a grinder, typically um, your finger or whatever just gets turned into dust. It gets turned into dust, there's nothing you can do to fix it. I tell a story about one time a student wiped his hand across a surface plate on a surface grinder and the wheel was lower than he thought and he cut right through his flesh on all four fingers and you could see his tendons moving underneath. Uh, so we don't want to ever do anything like that. And you never want to wear gloves on a grinder either. In fact, we don't wear gloves in the machine shop very often uh, because if your hand is in a glove and the glove gets caught in the machine, then the glove will pull you and your hand into the machine. Um, but that's pretty much the safety for the grinders. Uh, there's also, oh, there is a, uh, one more thing. Also, we have a, a, a coolant. You can put water in here, and whatever you're grinding, if it heats up, you can dip it to cool it off. I would uh, caution you that if you have several students here and you're both reaching for the same pot to cool off your, your part, uh, that you don't brand each other's hands and try to avoid doing that. That's it for the grinder safety.